An airplane dashboard has a lot of switches and dials the captain can use to guide and to control the airplane. The captain can monitor the position of the plane, communicate with the nearby stations, take off and land with all those controls. JavaScript's global environment is kind of like an airplane dashboard. It's full of controls and your code can use to make things happen. These controls come in the form of JavaScript objects and functions and inside a browser they allow your code to see and manipulate web pages. We can explore this browser environment using a feature in the browser called developer tools. At the time of this recording all the modern browsers such as Chrome, Microsoft Edge, Firefox, Opera and Safari all have similar developer tools. But I'll be using Chrome throughout this course. To code along with me, first download the course folder from the link in the description below and open it with your favorite code editor. Here I'm using Visual Studio Code. From the course folder, open the exercise folder called JavaScript DOM. And select the index.html file. The HTML file contains an h1 element with an ID of my heading and also a paragraph right below. If we open the page in a web browser, you can see how the browser renders the headline and the paragraph. So let's use the developer tools to investigate and interact with this page using JavaScript. Once you have the web page open in the browser, you can open the developer tools using Ctrl Shift I if you are on a Windows or Command Option I if you are on a Mac. As I mentioned in the previous lectures, here we can type JavaScript codes in real time and it will run as if we had written into the current web page. You are probably familiar with the alert command. Alert is a browser's function that shows a message window to the user. So let's try it out here. I'll type alert, then the message. Once I press enter, I'll get my message. We can also see the current URL by typing location.href. I'll press enter. As you can see, this is the exact URL as we see in the address bar. So now the question is, where did alert and location come from? Well, we didn't create them and they are not defined in any JavaScript file loaded by the HTML. These variables are part of the browser's global environment and there are many more variables like these in the global environment. Global variables are actually properties of a single global object that is called window. So let's type window into the console and see all the properties it has. Here we see the window object and Chrome's developer tools gives us a handy way to explore each object. If you click on the triangle icon, you can expand the object to see all of its properties. And notice how the window object has lots of properties. These are all the controls the browser gives you with JavaScript. And here's the alert function we used earlier. Then if I scroll down, you'll see the location object. If you expand the location object, you can see the href property we looked at earlier. All these globals are properties on the window object. I'll demonstrate this by clearing the console first using this clear console icon. Then in the console type window.alert and the message. And once I press enter, you'll see that window.alert gives us a message box just like before. Next, let's look at another property of window. It's called the document object and we can use it to select and control elements of the currently loaded web page. The document object and some of its properties are what we'll focus on from now on in the upcoming lectures. For example, let's update the color of this heading to purple. So in the console, I'll type document dot get element by ID.
then pass my heading then type dot style dot color assignment operator and string purple and if I press enter the heading becomes purple so in this example we use the get element by ID method on the document object to select the h1 element with the ID value of my heading then we updated its CSS color property value to purple so don't worry too much about this code right now because I'll teach you how this works with more detailed examples in the upcoming lectures. The main thing to keep in mind here is that we selected the element then we manipulated it. This is a common sequence for controlling a web page with JavaScript. Now I'll give you a small challenge to apply black color to the heading. So good luck, have fun and remember practice makes perfect. Now let's try and figure out how to add a yellow background color to the heading. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do it on your own. Here's how I do it. First, I'll refresh the page. Then type document dot get element by ID and pass my heading. Then type dot style dot since background color is two words you'll write it in camel case like this background color then I'll type assignment operator then string yellow I'll press enter and now the heading has a yellow background color of course, you don't usually run JavaScript codes inside a browser's JavaScript console like this. In fact, you'll usually make changes like this based on a user's interaction with the page. For example, clicking the headline might update the color of the headline. That's the third part of interactive JavaScript, such as responding to actions like clicking, mousing over a button, scrolling, or submitting a form. I'll teach you more about responding to actions called events in the upcoming lectures.